Tomorrow, myself, Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson have a very, very important match. Isn't that right, Stu? Yeah. That's right, it's a 5v5 elimination match. Dark Order versus Super Elite. With a lot on the line. Adam Page's championship aspirations. A tag team championship opportunity for the Dark Order. But that does not mean that we cannot have our desserts before our main course. And I love dessert. Now we have asked for this match tonight to prove a point. In fact, tell them what we're gonna do tonight. Hurt them. That's right. So I hope the elite you are watching because tonight will be a reminder of who the very best tag team in all elite wrestling is. Dark Order. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to an explosive edition of AEW Dark. I'm Excalibur, joined, as always, by the human suplex machine, Taz. And Taz, what a tremendous lineup we've got tonight. This is going to be an awesome, awesome episode of AEW Dark, as always, my man, I promise. As always, let's not delay any further and throw it down to our colleague, Justin Roberts, standing by inside the ring. This bat is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making her way to the ring straight out of your mama's kitchen, Red Velvet. Taz, Red Velvet, one of the true success stories of AEW Dark. Somebody that came to AEW during the pandemic era and really flourished. Oh, absolutely. There's several athletes that we've pointed out in the recent past here, Excalibur, and Red Velvet is definitely one of those, to your point, who really excelled through this show. Straight out of your mama's kitchen, by the way, that's Red Velvet. And let's start down to our colleague, Justin Roberts. Alejandra Lyon. Wow, I, you know, this Alejandra. guy back in the day, the Tasmaniac, he kind of had a gimmick like that. <laughs> <laughs> Cease and desist Jones coming out <laughs> Alejandra oh, Lyon's yeah. way. Oh, easy there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alejandra Lyon making her AEW debut. Red Velvet poised to make a run at the AEW Women's World Championship, perhaps with a victory here. But you see the, the poise right there, Excalibur, and the confidence of Red Velvet. Just on that arm drag, she was right ahead of Lyon already. Great go behind there into a waist lock by Alejandra Lyon, but you see Red Velvet doing the smart thing, pushing her opponent back toward the ropes to force the break but still breaks the grip instead of, the, you know, allowing the ref to just break, to have a lion break the hole. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Slapping the chops. It was a clean break, but that, that shot across the jaw found its mark. And now Alejandra Lyon with the cravat and the knee strikes. Driving knee strikes, added into that cravat, you're right, but Red Velvet in trouble here. Oh, shot to the side of the head. Red Velvet in trouble indeed. Alejandra Lyon wasting a little too much time on the cover. Got a two count, but maybe uh, had she been a little more hasty, might have gotten a three. Oh, you're exactly right, dude. I mean, that's exactly what happened. She sat a little bit too long before she went for the cover. Uh, and, and, and that's, I think, why she didn't get the upset victory. She's got some crazy long nails, Lyon. Yeah, digging. Like a lion, like a legit lion. Like lions have long nails and teeth. I mean, some people call them claws, but. Right, well, I call them nails. Okay, you yeah. know. And now digging those oh, claws. Ah, no! Into the spine, into the flesh of Red Velvet. Shades of rugged Ronnie Garvin. Yes? He used to do yeah. that. I know he did. <laughs> Among other people. Similar, yeah. Similar, yeah. Alejandra Lyon has said that rugged Ooh. Ronnie Garvin, one of her greatest influences in professional wrestling. Who? What? Who? <laughs> You're fine, for sure. If she hasn't said that, then somebody put it on her Wikipedia page. <laughs> oh, nobody. Oh! Ooh, tough landing there. Alejandra Lyon came in fast, double knees to the corner. She went for like a meteora, me meteora and crashed and burned. Look at this now, following up with these double clotheslines. Red Velvet sending Lyon into Ooh, the ropes. Nice. Drop toe hold. Yeah, that was nice. And now Velvet double knee strike. Those double knees found their mark. Red Velvet full of confidence here. Whoa. Moonsault press. Opts not to go for the cover, actually. It's just a moonsault, not the press. Exactly, and now you see her red velvet's really amped up right now. And she's got that gaze. Her eyes are locked into Lion. Shot to the midsection. Alejandra Lyons doubled over red velvet. has got her hook, Ooh. the final oh. slice. This has got to be it. The cover and the win. Now we're in this match. Red velvet.
little bit. Nasty, man. The final slice. Nice way to tear apart someone's rotator cuff. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, man. That was ugly. Nasty ugly. It was nasty. It was ugly, but Red Velvet made it look easy. And she scored the victory here. And Red Velvet saying, it's my time. Could we be looking at the Ooh. next AEW Women's World Champion? See right here, that awkward twisting motion Lion's body went through. Red Velvet captures the victory. That, that, that finisher move, man. That, that's rough. Nasty, nasty hold. Red Velvet, the final slice and the win. <laughs> wow. Elite general manager, huh? The greatest wrestler of all time, getting his hands on his own professional wrestling game where I create the cards. This is my universe. We have a challenger online. What would a layman know about professional wrestling, huh? Is there is clearly some bugs in the system or something. I'm not, I don't lose. I've got every belt in the universe. How am I losing in this game? Think you have what it takes? Prove it with AEW Elite General Manager. Draft your favorite AEW wrestlers and book your own shows from week to week. Download AEW Elite General Manager. Available now on iOS and Android. The bad boy Joey Janela, the concrete rose, Sunny Kiss. We're back together and better than ever. We are focused. No more go-go bars, mommy, milker, sausage, castles. No more bad influences like Alex Marvez. Sorry, Alex. Next week is AEW Dark 100. Next week, me and Sonny Kiss. It's the start of our road to victory. Our road to the gold. Our road to the AEW Tag Team Championships. Matt and Nick, the Young Bucks, me and Sonny Kiss, we're putting you on notice, and we're coming for those straps. He said it all. And next week, Bad Romance, Sonny and Joey, we're going to claim our rifle spot at the top of the division. Just like that. The Living Dead Girl, Abaddon, in action next on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Crawling to the ring from the Black Hills, Abaddon! Uh, that, that was a little freaky because Abaddon was only about 10 feet to my left and I pulled my foot in. I didn't want Abaddon <laughs> to like snatch my foot like she was a gator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one of those biting like gator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how they bite? You know that noise they make? I mean, snap it, snap it. Yeah, da, 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 da. I know exactly what you mean, Taz. Maybe because we have a brook today. Go, yeah, da, 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 da. Before this match gets underway, I want to remind everybody that you now have a chance to book your own dream matches courtesy of Elite General Manager, available free right now at the Apple App Store or Google Play. Download it today. Well, the internet's full of expert bookers, so you might as well do that. Just book the way you want, but you all know it all. From New Orleans, Louisiana, Killer Kate. I'm getting over with the audience as normal. Social Media Jones, that's me, baby. Killer Kate looking confident as uh, my broadcast colleague, Social Media Jones, and I, <laughs> once again, completely fearful of Abaddon. She's just, Abaddon is at another, another level of, uh, just scariness, if that is a real word. Killer Kate evading Abaddon with uh, with some relative ease. Oh, oh, until the knee to the midsection. Abaddon once again driving the knee in, and then the hair whip. Wow, Killer Kate landed really hard on her hip. You notice referee Mike Posey, he, he gestured at the hair, but he didn't get too close to Abaddon. Yeah, well, right. Oh, oh, oh. well, Mike, uh, Mike Posey is not. Uh, He's not a dumb guy. He might look it, but he's not. <laughs> I mean, not a nice guy. I don't mean, I'm not disrespecting Mike. I know Mike a long time. Oh, not oh, loving, oh, right? oh. You know him. I mean that nicely. Oh, look at this ground to pound here. That uh, that comment about Posey was just about as, as loving and nice as the, the dive off the apron and the strikes to the head, courtesy of Abaddon. Do I put people over, bro? I know. Killer K just got driven face first into the guardrail and into the ring apron. Abaddon in control of her opponent. 
Turn to kill a Kate to the ring. Abaddon, as we mentioned on uh, in the past, on a tremendous hot streak here. Could this be the next AEW Women's World Champion? Well, look, just just imagine if you kill a Kate watching Abaddon crawl over to you like that. While you're hurting, you see this, this, this Abaddon. Oh, that's oh, a snow for a great Mount counter. Bar. Yeah, that snow maybe trying to lock in a Juji Katami. Maybe a triangle sleeper. But Abaddon had her stacked through, rolled her up, and oh, just an uppercut. Killa Kate, as soon as she got rolled backwards, Abaddon came in hot with that uppercut. Sure thing, and you see, again, on the prowl, taking her time is Abaddon getting after it on Killa Kate. Repeated elbows to the midsection. And Abaddon charging. Oh, nobody home! Well, that was a nasty landing. Abaddon face first into that second turnbuckle pad. Taz Killa Kate has been really impressive using her speed to counter Abaddon's intensity. Yeah, you can see like she's got a couple of bruises on her body already, I think, unless that's the blood. Oh, oh God. spinning back slap punch, whatever that was, on a mark right on the jaw. A backhand from Abaddon knocking Killa Kate down to the canvas. Abaddon has got Killa Kate. Oh, elbow strike by Killa Kate. She needs to pour the pressure on. Well, our lovely audience here in Dallas saying, eat her soul. Just a great audience here. They love people. <laughs> Killa Kate, oh, oh! Just got power bombed by Abaddon, the living dead girl. And this could be the end of the night for Killa Kate. Oh, man. Oh! oh that headbutt. The headbutt, Abaddon with the head hooked at the DDT. Abaddon floats over, she covers, and she wins. That winner of this match, Abaddon. Abaddon has been dominant for sure. He's not playing around. Deranged, crazed, whacked out, but deadly and can get it done in the ring for sure. Killa Kate for his quick and impressive sheet look. It turns out Abaddon. Oh. oh, had all the answers here tonight. Aubrey Edwards maybe needing to have Joe. Oh, look at that Diamante. The drop kick to the side of the head, Bunny. The and trunks. the trunks and the win. Diamante, let me just cut to the nitty gritty. I don't like people messing with my money. I don't like people messing with my winning streak. And that's exactly what you did with that little stunt. <laughs> you must want some attention. Did, did your mama not give you enough? It's okay, it's okay. Let me put you at ease, okay? It, this, this match that you so desperately want, we can do it any place, any time. A big time rivalry between two heavy hitters, Diamante and Big Swole go one on one next on Dark. This is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the 305, Diamante. Taz, big time grudge match here between Diamante and Big Swole. It has been brewing for a number of weeks, but it really erupted last week on Dark. Yeah, no, I know. I, I, I tell you what, right now, I'm fired up for this. I'm amped up. I was talking to Diamante earlier, man, she is really focused for this fight. I tried to talk with Big Swole, man, she didn't want to talk. She's locked in also. And her opponent, from Clearwater, Florida, Definitely one of the most popular competitors in AEW, getting a great reception from the crowd here in Garland, just outside of Dallas, Texas. Well, these two ladies here, these two athletic, tough, mean ladies, they have a lot in common. And, and they're, they're both aggressive as hell, and they can go. Taz, what about the disrespect being shown by Big Swole? She came in the ring, had her back turned to her opponent. Swole saying to Diamante, I'm not worried about you. 
in so many words. Right, no, no. I, oh. Ooh! She's lucky Diamante didn't jump her from behind, but Diamante maybe just has a lot of confidence. She feels like she don't need to do that. I would have jumped her if I was Diamante, but that's just me. <laughs> I mean, in my prime, I yeah, yeah, yeah. attacked yeah. many people from behind. Did you? Yes, and in wrestling, too. Oh, I've never seen you wrestle. <laughs> Arm drag blocked. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on. <laughs> Oh, oh. Arm drag. Nice by Swole. Swole comes back with an arm drag. Diamante comes back with. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa. Both had the same idea. Swole with the boot to the midsection. Diamante reverses the throw to the rope. Swole, though. Big elbow strike. Or, excuse me, shoulder block. Shoulder block. Feel, she's feeling it right now. She's drop down, step over. Oh, block the hip toss. Diamante very nearly caught her with a. The trip, but instead, Swole counters. Went for that kick again. This time, finds wow. the mark right on the jaw of Diamante. The uh, far leg was hooked, but just a one count. Diamante. Wow. I like that Excalibur, if I can excuse you, uh, interrupt the way he's speaking. I was fixing to say, I really like the intensity that Swole showed in going for the cover, you know, on that first maneuver. Just wanted to point that out. Great intensity and uh, great body scissors here. You see Diamante was prying at the ankles. She got him separated, but Swole immediately crossing the ankles to put the pressure, the inward pressure on the ribs. Right, you saw for a second Diamante. Oh, wait, wait, maybe great cover counter. here. Diamante was using her, uh, the point of her elbow also, but uh, trying to break that, that that ankle grip. Finally got brought down into a pinning predicament by Swole, but instead Diamante to the midsection, oh. runs in and rips Man. Swole with that chop. That's how you bring a chop. Good gosh. And you can see Swole struggling with that. Oh, Diamante, a heavy left hand. Yeah, big time strikes right there by Diamante. And Look at that. Oof. Dragging Swole throat first across the top rope. Diamante really living up, uh, I'd say, holding up her end of this grudge match. And you know, look, Excalibur, you know the deal. I mean, like I was stating at the top of the match, both these ladies, they have a lot in common. They really, their styles are similar. They, you know, they both have that tough physical style. Both got a lot of ink on their bodies. I mean, they got a lot in common. They're tough girls. A know? lot of confidence, a lot of attitude yeah. as well. Both, both from Florida, I believe, right? Yeah. Miami for Diamante and Big Swole is from Clearwater. That's right. Thanks, Tom. See, I don't try to take the whole broadcast no, no, and no. talk like other people do. <coughs> I'm sitting right here, Tess. Come on. <laughs> Diamante, though, pouring the pressure on, stomping the ribs of Swole. And it all started with that running chop. Taz, if I, if I had to guess, I might think that chop could have could have caught Swole a little high, maybe on the throat. That's why she's having so much trouble getting up. Definitely. I've been chopped in the throat. I'm sure you have, too. And it, you can't explain to anyone who's never really been chopped with a it knife. It stops you in your tracks. It really does, man. It can shut you down quick. It affects your breathing and everything. Hit your windpipe, the esophagus region. And Swole, though, doing what she can to fight out of the corner to get back into this match. But Diamante charging in the uppercut. Three-quarter roll to close or across the distance of the ring. And the drop kick in the ropes. Diamante could be moments away from victory here. She might get him. Hooks the far leg. Swole able to kick out. Strong cover and a stronger kick out. And you can see Swole's in trouble. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can see clutching at that, that lower throat area. I'm not sure if it's from the chop or from the drop kick. Either way, Diamante very well positioned in this match. That's smart by Swole right there. She knows it's, she knows she's in trouble. She gets that foot on the bottom rope for the referee to break it. I think Knox, the referee, could have got Diamante back a little bit more, to be honest with you. But Diamante did the smart thing after getting the, the rope break. Dropped the elbow once again, targeting the upper chest of Swole. Trying to inhibit her opponent's breathing is Diamante. She's got that class. But see, she was trying to do some cross faces, Diamante. I mean, I, just a, an advice thing. I would hit those cross faces, and then if you're going towards the neck like she was doing, and then get your grip, your clasp on that neck, that S grip on the, the, the area of the throat that you're trying to affect instead of a jaw. Oh, just Swole was, tips, getting, was getting up tips. to Thank you, Taz. You're welcome. What are we saying now? Te technique by Taz for free here on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, I was, I was going to say, Big Swole's getting to their feet. She hit Diamante with a couple elbows, but Diamante did a smart thing, just dropped to her belly and brought Swole back down with her. But now, Swole back up on her feet once again, but a sledgehammer shot across the spine. 
Diamante has been in control for the bulk of this match. Went for the Polish hammer, but Swole with the cross chop. Hit the ropes, the second one. Diamante ducks the roundhouse, ducks the sweep, and eats the headbutt. Tremendous, tremendous combination, or attempted combination there from Big Swole. Hit the running uppercut in the corner. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bandera sends Swole over the top rope at the shoulder to the midsection by Big Swole. Big Swole coming in over the top. Diamante. Diamante's trying to stop that, not to get oh, covered. Oh, sat down, two, no! Oh, Diamante oh. grabbed the rope! Oh, 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 oh. Diamante. Highway robbery city right there, buddy. How did Knox not see that, dude? Rick Knox was looking at the shoulders of Big Swole, and Diamante grabbed the rope to keep Swole down for the three count. Let's take another look at it, man. This was, wow, this was pretty hefty. I mean, you see right here, to your point, Diamante's trying to block this. She sits down, gets the cover, the referee, to your point, is looking at the shoulders. Man, I thought he looked up quick and saw the hand, but I guess he didn't, man, that was close. Well, Diamante absolutely stole one from Big Swole, but you know Swole is not gonna take this lightly. He's pissed. Ahead of the big 10-man elimination match coming up tomorrow on Dynamite. Dark Order's Evil Uno and Stu Grayson are in action next. Join the Dark Order. This is a tag team bout set for a one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the keep at a combined weight of 422 pounds, Stu Grayson, Evil Uno, Dark Order! Taz, I know you've got your issues with Dark Order, but they are getting a hero's welcome here in Dallas. No, oh, they are, and I respect that. I mean, I understand fans throughout the country, throughout the world, love the Dark Order. There's a lot to love. There's so, there's so many talented athletes in the group. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I, you know, I mean, I, I get the respect. I don't have to like them, but I do respect what they've done and they continue to do it. And let's hear from our colleague Justin Roberts. Therefore, it's a combined weight of 414 pounds, a team of Zach Mason and Warren Johnson. Zach Mason on your left, Warren Johnson on your right. To square off with Evil Uno and Stu Grayson. And Uno and Grayson will be part of that huge 10-man tag team match, 10-man elimination tag team match coming up tomorrow on Dynamite. John Silver, Alex Reynolds, Uno, Grayson, and Hangman Page take on the elite. Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, and the Good Brothers. Massive, massive 10-man elimination. That is gonna be wild tomorrow night on Dynamite, no doubt. If the Dark Order side wins, they will not only get a shot at the Young Bucks and the AEW World Tag Team Championship, Hangman Adam Page will get a shot at AEW World, World Champion Kenny Omega. All of that and so much more Fight for the Fallen edition of AEW Dynamite tomorrow, 8, 7 Central on TNT. That'll be in Charlotte, North Kakalaki. Great, great wrestling state, city, I should say. Stu Grayson pushing Johnson towards the corner. Oh! High boot there by Uno. Yeah, Uno. I mean, he's got a funky look, a funky physique. A funky guy with funky gear, but he can kick ass in that ring for sure. He can certainly go. And we've talked about how, you know, any combination of the Ooh. Dark Order can be deadly, but this 
this kind of original combination of one and two, Uno and Dos, so to speak, yeah. are really perhaps the most potent. No, no doubt about it, Excalibur. I mean, we've talked about that in you know, the past here on Dark. I mean, I, like I said earlier, down uh, back, uh, back whenever the frig I said it. But yeah, you, you've known these guys a lot longer than I do, uh, Stu and, and uh, Uno, you know what I mean? You've seen them compete for years, and they've always been on point, right? Oh. They've always been probably a great team, I'm sure. They have, but Uno took his eye off the ball. Zach Mason took advantage of it, hit a clothesline from the outside. Well, you know what? Good for Zach Mason. Good for him. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, good for him. Knocked the hell out of out of uh, Uno. Well, Mason tagged in, laying in a right elbow shot, keeping Evil Uno isolated. The big young man, a big athlete, this Mason. He's the one in the ring, in the shorter trunks. Yeah, Warren Johnson on the outside. Both men making their AEW tag team debut and wearing, really wearing them out, huh? Yeah, successfully oh. smashing Uno in the corner, but Uno fighting back, fighting his way out of trouble, but Mason cutting him off. Zach Mason making the tag out. That's a little inexperienced that before you tag your partner, you're, you're still legal. Take a couple of shots on Uno as you make the tag. Don't tag him and leave your partner without tagging, with punching him a couple of times. Yeah, keep your body on your opponent. Yeah. Make sure he's not gonna make a burst out of the corner. Great teamwork there by Mason and Johnson. Clothesline takes Uno off his feet. Oh, here we go, here we go. Could be an upset. No, nope. Uno kicking out. Huge upset. That would have happened. Stu Grayson on the apron. His bald head would exploded to the top of this arena. That guy's tempered. You know who he is. Yeah. It's a wild man. Zach Mason fighting, he loves to fight, brawl. Born and bred for combat, so to speak. No, I was born and bred for love and happiness. <laughs> but then what happens? I don't know. <laughs> you grew up in Red Hook, that's Yeah. Exactly. In the shadow of the Statue of Liberty. That's yes. a story for another time. That's true. <laughs> Zach Mason grabbing Evil Uno by the mask, driving him back down into the canvas. And maybe speak on that, Excalibur. You've had that happen to you. I've never worn a mask. You know, so when you get pulled by that mask, it's almost worse than having hair, right? It controls your whole head. Right, because uh, you got the, the strap underneath your chin. It's like, uh, it's almost like getting face masks in a football game. Right, right. But right. Uno making the tag out to Grayson. Grayson running whoa, over whoa. Johnson. Belly to belly suplex. Yeah, release over the overhead, belly to belly. Now he's going to make Uranagi. Oh, good job right there by Grayson. He's always on point, dude. Sends Warren Johnson oh. to the outside. Yeah, Johnson landed hard. <laughs> Swing and a miss. <laughs> Sorry, I've just caught myself on that. <laughs> Mason and Johnson, both men on the outside. Stu Grayson, what does he have in mind here? Oh, Goes over the top and crashing down to the outside. Hey, you don't see that much out of Stu Grayson, right? Damn, that was nice. Tremendous explosion with a tope con hero. And now returning the legal man, Warren Johnson, to the ring. Stu Grayson in the driver's seat. Oh, Johnson back in Grayson of the ropes, but I don't know if Johnson spotted the blind oh, tag. Oh, no. Stalling German suplex by Evil Uno. Zach Mason charging in, eats the oh. high boot. Oh, Pele kick. Evil Uno. Wow! Might be it. Might be Dunsky for Mr. Mason here. Taz, the Dark Order is looking sharp in this match. Except Mason's not uh, legal, Taz. Okay. Nope, Johnson's the legal man. That's what I said. <laughs> Johnson's the legal oh, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uno. How far away he is, dude? What Duke the heck? Grayson. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, just a running knee strike into the pile driver. The cover and the win. Order. Taz, could we be looking at the next men to challenge the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team Championship? We will find out tomorrow night on Dynamite, all part of that big 10-man elimination tag team match. We, the acclaimed, we want to shine at the AEW Tag Team titles. And as of the rankings today, the Varsity Blondes are second, and the acclaimed the third, which means you two clowns are standing in our way. As far as I'm concerned, you've got two options. You can come right back into this ring 
right now and fight the acclaimed. Or you can hightail your asses out of here and go Eiffel Tower, your little cheerleader friend under the bleachers. I said something about poor innocent Julia and her trip to Paris, and we felt really bad. So from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of Max Caster's heart, the acclaimed would love to tell all of you that we don't give a shit. And we're gonna make your lives hell until we get what we want. And that's a shot at the AEW Tag Team titles. Now that's a mic drop. Big time trios tag team matchup in our main event. Dante Martin teams up with the Varsity Blondes to take on the Hollywood hunk Ryan Nemeth and the acclaimed. This is a trios tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 195 pounds. Dante Martin. His partners being accompanied by Julia Hart at a combined weight of 453 pounds. Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., the Varsity Blocks. Tap before this big time trio tag team match gets underway. I want to remind everybody that AEW makes our historic return to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania coming up in August. Two nights at the Peterson Event Center. First on Wednesday, August 11th, AEW Dynamite will be live in Bridgeburg. Then two nights later, the historic first show of AEW Rampage on Friday, August 13th. Tickets available right now at AEWTIX.com. Like six extra seconds. On that. I didn't have to go that fast. Ah, oh, you were tremendous. And they were putting first from Hollywood, California, weighing 208 pounds. Here's the Hollywood Hawk, Ryan Nimmit. You might have been tremendous, six cow, but you'll never look like the Hollywood Hawk, my friend. Never. Joining uh -huh. him, the acclaimed. The acclaimed top of the chain, so I bet Yo. Yeah, Based my guys are here. Yo! Yo! Listen! Yo! Listen! I'm listening! Yo! I'm listening! It's the acclaimed, and y'all know the deal. The Second Amendment should be repealed. And now that Max is on the beat, I'm the only one here that really packs heat. I stay spitting like a bump stock. Call me Johnson & Johnson, leaving you with blood clots. If Julia's getting involved, I'm a ripper like Ezekiel Elliott's dog. Oof. Come on, try me, baby, try me. Dallas! The acclaimed have arrived! Well, the number two ranked acclaimed teaming up with the Hollywood hunk Ryan Nemeth here tonight to take on the number one ranked Varsity Blondes and Dante Martin. That Max Cast, he's one of a kind, man. He really is. Uh, he's pushing boundaries, Taz. Oh, buddy. He said it, not us. That's the important thing. Word. <laughs> Yo. Well, well, this is interesting here. This is uh, th these six men here. This is very interesting. You got Julia Hart on the outside, two-time national champion cheerleader. Now you got Dante and Bowens locking up here. I think Bowens showing off his strength advantage on Dante Martin, and I mentioned the Blondes and the Acclaimed ranked number one and two in the tag team division. They definitely would love to get a shot at the Young Bucks, but tomorrow night, the big tag team, 10-man tag team elimination main event. If the Dark Order side wins, Dark Order will get the next shot at the Young Bucks. Yeah, that 10-man elimination is gonna be wicked, dude, I'm telling you. Ooh, blocked the arm drag. Good strength by Bowens. Strength advantage I was talking about, but the quickness oh. of Dante Martin back and bones to the ropes goes for the trip wow. leapfrog up and over the top. That turned in the air, dude, off the leapfrog. And and never seen anyone do that. Springing off the bottom rope with a shotgun drop kick, just a two count. Bowen's desperately trying to make it to the corner to get the tag. Dante Martin's feet like lightning, so quick. His balance, his 
presence on the mat is amazing. Good on ball right now on Bowens. Pillman wants in. And Tez, you know, the interesting thing about this matchup is all six competitors came to AEW in the uh, in the pandemic era. Yeah. Haven't really had a chance to compete in front of live crowds before a couple of weeks ago. And thus far, it's, it's, it's been really rewarding to see and hear how the crowd reacts to all this young talent. Oh, I agree. And, and, and to your point, these six young athletes in the ring exemplify everything you just said, including the young lady on the outside and Julia Hart. So it's really cool. Brian Pillman right there, good arm drag on Nemeth. Got himself uh, some wrist control. And makes the tag out to Griff Garrison. Varsity Blondes have proven to be a very potent tag team over the last few months. They've held on to that number one rank for, I yeah. believe, over, over the last month. Oh, how about Griff Garrison, man? We used to, we used to joke around about the, uh, what do you call it, the Ivy League Jones and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, it seems like that seems like eons ago, man. This guy has, has evolved so well, Griff Garrison, and this team of the Varsity Blondes, him and Pillman together, I love it. Cover here by Pillman. I don't like many people. I don't. If they're not in Team Taz, I usually don't like them. But I like the Varsity Blondes. There's something about them. I like them. Is it their hair? No, oh. definitely not their hair. <laughs> something about it. Maybe because I was a big-time high school football guy. I played D2 college football. Well, enough about me, I think, Chris. <laughs> but you also like the hunk. I love, love Ryan Nemeth. He's the man. Dante's great. The acclaimed Dolph's awesome. I love all these cats, man. This is great. Wow, sir. Perhaps six new members of Team Taz. No. Okay. <laughs> You guys got enough? Yes. You just don't have enough hats to go around. No, That's the problem. <laughs> oh, great work by Ryan Nemeth turning the referees back and allowing his partners to gain the upper hand for him. Look at Nemeth, man. He, it's like that shark that sees the proverbial blood in the water. He went right after Pillman. Now here comes Caster, who's a heavy hitter. He'll bring the wood. Max Caster delivering some big right hands. Quick tag to Bowens. And even though they're uh, they're ranked number two, the acclaimed very well could take that number one spot at any time. They certainly have all the tools, no pun intended, or well, maybe a little, to do so. Oh, Pillman's not taking that. His bones is the five-two. Yes, yeah, no, I, got oh, it. Yeah, I yeah. just tried to leave it alone. No, no, I'm trying to call the action actually for the first time ever. <laughs> Come on now, what do you mean, Brian Pillman Jr. Trying to make it to the ropes, Bone doing a great job of positioning his body in between Pillman and the ropes. Way to get choked out here. Pillman, Pillman was trying to get some separation on that arm and the throat. He got out though. Some shots to the ribs. Trying to make the tag. Griff Garrison's got those long arms. Uh oh, uh oh. But Bowen's taking him over the top. Release Northern Lights suplex. One, two. Just a two count from Rick Knox. You notice how quick, right? You younger wrestlers out there watching this or want to be wrestlers, how quick Bowens went for the cover. After the release, Northern Lights throw, he quickly topped his opponent. Didn't get the win, but that was smart wrestling. Forcing Pillman to expend more energy on the kick out. Ryan Nemeth sending Pillman to the corner. The acclaimed holding Pillman open. Max Caster, of course, kissing the hand of Brian Pillman. Well, why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't he lift the guy's knuckles? He does. Oh, ho, ho, ho. great spear by Ryan Nemeth, the Hollywood hunk. Just driving the wind out of the lungs of Brian Pillman Jr. Pillman, Whoa. though. Good job off high cross body off the top rope by Brian Pillman. His partners, Dante Martin and Griff Garrison, they want to get in this thing. They know Pillman needs to tag out. Pillman needs to tag out. He needs to change the pace of this match. And tagging either man on the outside would certainly do so. Oh, Ryan Nemeth. Smart veteran move there. Swept out Dante Martin. And I think he actually smashed Dante in the corner. Talk about smashing Garrison, smashing the acclaimed. Griff Garrison taking down the acclaimed. Sends the Hollywood hunk over the top and to the outside. Uh oh, uh oh. High oh. to Bowens. Good gosh, what a kick. Those long, long legs. He's got such tremendous range with those legs and such tremendous spring with that splash in the corner. Colliding into both members of the acclaimed. Throw into the ropes. Flapjack City right there might get the win. Both legs hooked. No. Caster able to kick out. Yeah, Caster really landed. He might have landed right on his forehead or somewhere in his head region, his brain area. Well, yeah, all head. of those things are part of the head. So you were close. I'm on point, bro. That's <laughs> how I got you. Know, right? On point, Jones. 
Whoa, 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 quick switch right yeah, there. Very quick drop step, but Garrison back slipping out. Yeah, Pillman with the blind tag. Oh, rolling elbow strike. Watch Pillman. Pillman was going for that air, Pillman, but instead. Wow. Bowens, nice job. Bowens turning Pillman inside out. Now the thrust oh. kick drops Griff Garrison. It's Dante. Dante Martin Moon Salt Press. Amazing. Max Caster, the mic drop. Nobody home. Hillman rolling up Caster. One, two. Whoa! Man. So close. That was close. Missing that mic drop. I thought that was it. Pillman had the right idea, but it didn't happen. But Dante Martin, now the legal man with Max Caster. Caster's in trouble. Oh, he got out of trouble. A shot across the windpipe, but a shotgun drop kick from Dante. Ryan Nemeth makes the tag. Big elbow strike. Dante Martin, you can see he's staying light. He's staying poised on the balls of his feet. And a beautiful drop kick. Tess, he nearly landed on his feet. Amazing. Just textbook. Amazing. Dante Martin keeping the pressure on Ryan Nemeth. Oh, oh my God. God. What the hell was that? <laughs> Holy cow. Jeez. Swing and a miss. Oh, man, that was wild. Oh. Ryan Nemeth picks the ankle. Dude, I'm with the audience. Holy shit. Dante comes over. The cutter. Whoa, just, just the pin flipping him. cutter. He's got the hunk hooked and he's got the win. Wow. Here are your winners. The Varsity Blondes and Dante Martin. Taz, it's an old basketball cliche, but Dante Martin can jump out of the gym. Oh, yeah, that, that, that cliche is apropos, dude. Holy God, that was, man, I've seen guys do dives, so have you. I've, I've taken a lot of dives in my career. Well, no, that sounded bad. <laughs> I've, I've had guys dive off to me. That sounded real bad. No, but uh, I'm telling you right now, man, that, I, never, I don't think the last time I've seen something like that. Not, it was, not only I was probably the, can't say the guy's name. <laughs> it wasn't only the height over the corner post, it was the distance he covered, too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And he finished him off right here. Nemeth had nothing to do but get pinned. The flipping stunner. And Dante and the Blondes picking up the victory. Yo! 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 I knew you'd be looking for this. I knew you'd be looking for the microphone, Anthony, because that's the one thing you guys do right, is talk. And I'll give it to you. I'll give you that. But there's a lot of things the Varsity Blondes do right, and it's in this ring. And it's why we're the number one ranked tag team in the number one wrestling company in the world. You thought they won the match, though. <laughs> well, put them over. Come on, Brian. We're bigger, we're stronger, we're faster. And you can put a concrete wall in between the Varsity Blondes and the AEW Tag Team Champions, and we will run straight through it. And you guys are sure as hell a lot softer than concrete, so why don't you just put your money where your fat mouth is and get in the ring? And that's a Mike politely said that. Thank you for joining us here tonight on AEW Dark. We are looking forward to seeing everybody in Charlotte, North Carolina, live at 8 and 7 Central on TNT for AEW Dynamite. Fight for the Fallen. Good night, everybody. Wednesday on TNT, it's Fight for the Fallen. Jericho returns as the pain maker for labor number two. FTR takes on Santana and Ortiz, and the Elite challenge Hangman and Dark Order to a 10-man elimination. You are AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite live at 8 on TNT.